Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now that ChatGPT can see, that is it has a multimodal mode, it can process images as well as text, it turns it into a very powerful tool. Now in this video I want to look at a practical way that you can use that ability and that is to read the labels on electronic and electrical equipment. So you know on the back of phone chargers and power strips and all this kind of thing. You've got a little square with some very tiny writing in it. We'll talk about volts and amps and things like that. There might be some different symbols for which standards it's passed. And actually knowing some of that key information can be very important. For example, if you want to travel abroad with a charger, for example, or what is a charger rated for? Well, you can either squint at that very little writing or you can ask ChatGPT. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, before we crack on, I would like to thank Super Danny for sponsoring this video. Okay, so here I am using ChatGPT4, which has multimodal, which means it can take, for example, pictures as well as just text. I'm using the desktop version because it's easier for me to record to make this video. However, it would be more natural and I would expect uh, people to do this kind of thing using their mobile, but mobile or desktop, you get the same results. Okay, so this is our first piece of electrical equipment. It's a USB charger lots of uh, writing on it. If I'm not particularly well adversed with what all these things mean, I can ask ChatGPT to give me some idea. Okay, so I've attached that picture there and I can ask ChatGPT, what can you tell me about this device? So I don't know what it is, what is it? Tell me all about it. Okay, so the results are back. So what does it say? The device in the image you provided appears to be a Huawei switching power adapter. These types of are commonly used to charge electronic devices such as smartphones or tablets, which is correct. And then it gives me some specific information. Okay, what's important here is that it tells between 100 and 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. This suggests the adapter can be used in various countries around the world with different main voltage frequencies. Now, of course, that's and frequency. And that's really important because if I wanted to take this with me to a trip to the USA, this would work. It wouldn't just burn out because of the wrong voltage. And the other thing I really want to know is how much power has it got? Well, it says here it's five volts and two amps, which means it can charge up to 10 watts. So two great bits of information I found out now. I can use it abroad and it will charge up to 10 watts. But there's some other interesting information it gives me if we just scroll down a bit. Particularly these three things here, double insulated. This is indicated by the square inside the other square. Do you know, to be honest, I've seen that mark on so many things, I didn't even know that. So, which is why ChatGPT is so useful. It's double insulated. It conforms to the EU safety regulations. And it also says that it should be uh, responsibly uh, recycled, not just thrown away in the general waste. So I've got quite a lot of information of that without having to squint or to read the small text. ChatGPT has been able to help me out very, very quickly. Okay, here's the next picture. Well, that's a micro SD card, but uh, okay, eight gigabytes, but what speed is it? Uh, anything else we can find out about it? Let's ask ChatGPT to give us all the information. Tell me about this memory card. Okay, so we've got some text back. So, okay, it tells us eight gigabytes, fair enough. It tells us that uh, it's a SDHC, so it's a secure digital high capacity label, which means it's somewhere between two and 32 gigabytes. But the really important thing is that it's seen that it's class four, which means it has a write speed of four megabytes per second, and that's suitable for high, uh, vi high definition video recording and high resolution photos. So now I know that it's a class four, eight gigabyte SD card. What happens if I show a different SD card? One with some different numbers on it. Well, this is the one I want to show it. Now, of course, 64 gigabytes, but we've got this three in a kind of a bathtub here. We've got this V30, we've got this I here, a XC, micro SD XC. What's the difference between that and the one we've just seen? Tell me about this SD card. Okay, so yes, it's a uh, 64 gigabytes, but here's a V30, what does that mean? Well, that stands for Video Speed Class 30. That means it has a minimum sequential write speed of 30 megabytes per second, which is suitable for recording 4K video. The U3 symbol, that three in the bathtub, as they call it, indicates the card is UHS, ultra high speed, class three, which ensures a minimum write speed again of 30 megabytes a second. Now, I wonder if I can ask it this. What are the differences between the two cards? 
Okay, so it's given me the answers. The first obvious one, one was an eight gigabyte one, the other was a 64 gigabyte one. Here's the thing that's important though. The first was a class four with a guaranteed minimum write speed of four megabytes. Second, correct. The second card is a V30U3 indicating a write speed of 30 megabytes a second, which means it's much faster, good. And then it also goes on to say that one is a SDHC, secure digital high capacity. The second was an SDXC, an extended capacity, which means it supports cards from 32 gigabytes, of course, because it is 64 gigabytes. I do have a video here on this channel talking about how the formatting changes between uh, FAT32 to XFAT when you go over from that 32 gigabyte barrier. Uh, a link in the description uh, below. Okay, so here is the uh, label on the underneath of a Super Danny power strip extension cable, as we might call them over here in uh, England, in Britain. So let's see what uh, ChatGPT can tell us about this. What can you tell me about this power strip? Okay, so here's the information. It's gone ahead and read that label and just transcribed it there. That's fine, but what does it say about it? Well, from the specification, uh, it's a power strip that can handle a variety of voltages, which means it may be suitable for international use. Now, just a quick note about this. When I travel around, for example, if I go to the USA, I always take a power strip extension cable from home because then I just need one plug adapt adapter for the end of the power strip and then I can plug my other devices into that. I don't need to like take five of them with me. Or the other way around, if someone from the USA was coming over here to Europe, then they could bring one of their adapters like the Super Danny power strip and then they'd have just, it would all just work. So you can use it internationally. It has a significant surge protection rating of 2,000 modules, indicating that it can protect devices connected to it from large power spikes. And the power rating of 1,875 watts suggests that it can support multiple devices simultaneously without overloading, assuming they don't exceed that overall power draw. So of course, for uh, smaller and medium electrical devices, charging and so on, absolutely no problem whatsoever. Points out it also has USB port with a total output of 4.8 amps, which it works out are shared, which means they're not per port, which means they are divided amongst all the ports present. So absolutely brilliant. Now these uh, SAT Super Danny power strips actually come in like you know 22, 28 plug uh, varieties. So let's ask ChatGPT about that. Is a 28 outlet power strip safe to use? The safety of a 28 uh, outlet power strip depends on several factors, including the design, how it's used, the total electrical load placed on it, and whether it complies with the relevant safety regulation. Well, first of all, does it certification ensure that the power strip is certified? And it has, for example, an FCC mark. And if we scroll back up a bit here, we can see the FCC mark indicates this has been certified in the United States for electromagnetic interference standards and blah, 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 blah. So it has already passed those tests. So in that case, yes, electrical load, which tells us about the 1,875 watts. So you might not want to plug in space heaters into this, for example, but for charging up smartphones and so on, absolutely no problem whatsoever. And also surge protection for a large number of out, uh, outlets, surge protection is essential. And of course we know that this one has that high 2100 uh, joule protection. Okay, so I've gone ahead and asked it where would be a good place to use such a uh, Super Danny power strip. It says offices and workstations. In an office setting, there might be a need to connect multiple computers, monitors, printers, and other peripherals. Absolutely right. Audio and video production studios have a multitude of equipment that needs power, and often they're not very high powered. Uh, just, you know, mixers and recording devices are, you know, aren't taking loads and loads of watts. Uh, research laboratories, workshops, power strips can be used in workshops, can be used in various tools and machines. Entertainment centers for home theaters, gaming setups, or professional entertainment rigs, uh, and event or conference centers in the classroom and so on. So these are some of the great places you'd want to use a Super Danny power strip. And ChatGPT has told us just where. And this is the last picture I want to give ChatGPT. If you're like me, I've got a drawer full of cables and you pull out the cable and there are all just kinds of cables and there are video cables and there are charging cables and there are just some cables. I look at them and go, what on earth is this cable? So let's ask it, what does it know about that type of plug? What is it? What's that plug, ChatGPT? Okay, and the results are back. This image appears to show a high definition multimedia interface, HDMI, that's exactly where it is. It's a HDMI uh, cable. Thank you for telling me that. Saved me having to look it up and try to remember. And it tells you different things here about HDMI cables. But brilliant that it was able just to help me out there when I pull out a cable out of my nest of, of snake's nest of cables, it can tell me what it is. 
Okay, so there you have it, how to use ChatGPT to read electronic and electrical labels. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Have you tried it? Did it help you understand what was written on a particular label? Please do let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these types of videos, then I invite you to stick around, join the community by subscribing to this channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.